Today on First Cup, um, you guys submitted questions, so I'm going to answer them, and I'm going to tell you about my day, and we're going to drink coffee, and that's it, but it'll be fun. So stick around, rolling in 15, as I get some things ready here. Oh, three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Clearly, I am tired and distracted, and none of the things that a person without coffee would be. Why does my coffee taste funny? But maybe in a good way. Oh, because I'm using new coffee. I ground different coffee. It's dark. That is dark. Some dark coffee. Dark like outside. Oh, can I go back to bed? I feel like I'm missing something this morning. I really do. But maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just being crazy. Cut my hair yesterday. Trim my beard. Have a new beard style. I don't know if you can really tell. This is shorter. This is even shorter. And then this is longer. So the plan is we're going to grow this a little bit. Not not a lot. Like, not like, not long. But longer. Keep short. Shortish, right? Work the beard part. Good morning, Nathan. Nathan is among the crop of uh, free training day instructors. And I finished the first draft of the schedule. Sent it off to the instructors. Good morning, Tommy. I hope you had a great birthday. Good morning, Jenny. Uh got some some people writing back saying can you please change this can you please change this uh, gonna try to accommodate everyone it's tough we should be able to do it we'll see uh, i'm excited for free training day where are we five weeks five weeks from today november 13th good morning mccarthy sensei hope you are well um yeah yeah had a t yesterday was a pretty typical tuesday had a pretty good tuesday good morning francis had a great meeting with justin talked about some martial journal stuff some website stuff some print issue stuff we've got a goal for issue two we'll see if we can do it I, he sent me a bunch of stuff yesterday i gotta go through and that's really what today is gonna be all about good morning john well look at all these people rolling in this morning uh that's really what today is about, is trying to catch up on all the various whistle kick project things that I'm behind on. I don't... Jenny emails. Good morning, Stacy. That's really, I mean, honestly, that's my life. People send stuff in. I do work. I send it back out. And we repeat, repeat, repeat. And once in a while, something falls out as like a finished product, whether it's a book or an article or a website or, or, or. And all the while, we're doing these sorts of things. Andrew came up yesterday. We recorded... What did we do yesterday? We did three podcast episodes. We did a, a Q&A and a couple other topic episodes. And then, because I don't know why it's taking me this long to think of this, we recorded a video for Patreon. So if you're a Patreon contributor, you know that every month I put up at least one video showing some technique stuff, some, some things to think about with your training and it's always been me it's always been imagine if you had another person or imagine your opponent or i'm using you know other things heavy bags whatever well andrew was here so we demonstrated and we got to collaborate on it, it was tons of fun and honestly it was the highlight of my day stacy says yay for getting to see your friend andrew yeah you know honestly there are days that if it wasn't for andrew i wouldn't talk to anybody Andrew and I are, are constantly working on stuff for Martial Arts Radio. Oh, yeah, and I recorded uh, two other episodes. I had another instance where we had an episode lined up. Excuse me, hold on. Another episode lined up with someone that I was a little nervous about. Not that they would be a bad guest, but that they might not be a great interview. 
and that those are two different things. I don't know if they don't sound different. Trust me, they are. Uh, but they were both great. Actually, both of them were really solid interviews. One was someone who's local, and I look forward to meeting this person in person. They may come to free training day. They won't be instructing because the roster is full. But yeah, yeah, just. It seems like everything that we do expands the network and the mission. Every time we do this, whatever, you know, martial arts radio, we do a new book, we do a new whatever, more and more people see what we're working on and they see the value. And then we can have some influence. You know, I, I think. I think there's a lot of change coming to the martial arts and I hope that it's all good. And if we have anything to say about it, the stuff that we're going to push for is going to be good. It's the stuff we're already pushing for. You guys know that. You know what we're doing. What else happened yesterday? Anything? Mm. It was again warm. We are on track to reach mid-October, like October 15th without a frost here. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Good for the plants. All my plants are still out on the porch. That's weird. That's never happened before. I've even got my rubber tree plant out there. Uh, Cause it's like 65 degrees during the day and it's not getting below like 45 at night. But you know what worries me about that? If we have a really mild winter and we've already had really bad tick seasons. For those of you that don't know, the reason the ticks don't take over here is because they die, <laughs> because it gets cold. But when we have a more mild winter, not enough of them die. And then the deer and the moose die. So I'm worried about that and whatever else might happen if we had some strange winter that was really mild. We did have one winter few years ago where I didn't use the snowblower. We had very little snow. That was a strange winter. Granted, I also had a lifted forerunner at the time, but that's a whole different story. What's going on today? Um, some client stuff, uh, board meeting. Oh yeah, we I don't think we've ever talked about that. I'm on the board for the Vermont Small Business Development Center, which means I offer feedback. It's not a really intensive position, but we have a board meeting today. And I got a call with somebody. I'm trying to, I'm like visualizing my schedule. And then in between, I got all the other stuff I got to do that I normally have to do. So yeah, that's what we got to do. Now I want to make sure we get through the things that Frank gave us yesterday because we didn't get a chance to get through them. And kudos to all of you who drop stuff in the Facebook group. So let me let me drop that banner in there to make sure you're all on page. Make sure you go subscribe to that group. That's where we're pulling questions from. It's the best way to do that. Once that group grows, there's other fun stuff that we want to do. But we gotta wait till we have you know enough of you in there to make it worth the effort. You're quiet. You're all quiet this morning. Am I telling good stories? What's going on? Story time with Uncle Jeremy. Yeah, anything else? I feel like I'm missing something. I really do. But I've pretty much felt that way since I woke up. So we'll find out later. Oh, here's a fun one for you. I had something on my calendar for tomorrow, and it was 3 to 4 p.m. And I had it flagged as, do you color code your calendar? I color code my calendar. And it was color coded to indicate that it was something I had to do at that time. But there was no description. And I saw it a couple weeks ago and I went, I don't know what this is. And I almost deleted it, but I left it. I said, there's something. It's going it, to, hopefully, I'm going to get a reminder for whatever it is. And I did. It was an acupuncturist appointment. I got, an, I got a text yesterday. Just reminder, you've got an acupuncture session on Thursday. I went, ah, <laughs> thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Stacy says she's running late, getting ready for work, mostly listening. Slider says we should start a board. Whistlekeck has an unofficial board. 
that has morphed over the years. People that I bounce things off. Um, being part of a board is, depending on the, the style of board, you know, a lot of organizations have boards of directors. And I have found that the majority of people, when they join a board, don't actually want to do any work. Most people don't want to do any work on anything at all. The number one thing that has held Whistle Kick back has been a difficulty finding people who are aligned with our mission, willing to put in the work, and willing to do so for little to no money. I recognize that that last part is a very big part. But as an example, um, I had somebody lined up last week for their first week as a trial. We coordinated on Monday. I gave them a list of tasks. I said, this is what I need you to take care of. This was a paid position, an adequately paid position. And they confirmed receipt and never wrote back. Once again, back to the drawing board, trying to find some help. Now, honestly, some of this was whistle kick. Some of it was my consulting work, but this person was going to get was going to work on on both projects because that's where I'm able to afford to pay them. And uh, no, nope, nothing ghosted me. People are weird. Jenny says she's finishing her yoga time. Let's pour more coffee. All right, so Frank sent in some stuff the other day. Let's go over it. I mentioned it. I mentioned it not long ago. Oh, and because he may see this, I want to welcome Craig to the Editor's Group for Marshall Journal. Uh, he's been contributing some great articles, and if you know Craig, you know he's been around for a while. And he does some great work, and he's a wonderful, wonderful person. I consider him a great friend. And uh, Justin and I were talking about people that we would consider onboarding as additional editors for help because, let's face it, Marshall Journal is probably the busiest project that we have. Maybe um, in terms of frequency, it's busier than Martial Arts Radio. Uh, not quite time-wise, but needing more help. So we brought him on. So yay. That's not the right person. That's not Frank. Where's Frank? I just sent Frank a message. Where is it? There it is. All right. So yesterday was Rich Franklin's birthday. And if you don't know Rich Franklin, you may know him from Cyborg Soldier, 2008, The Genesis Code, 2010, and Formless. And unlike most MMA fighters, he was a high school math teacher in Cincinnati. And this is probably why Frank picked this, because Frank is from this area. Used to be a high school math teacher in Cincinnati for four years. He still volunteers at the school a few times a month. And he's got his BJJ brown belt under Jorge Gregel. And so we got we got a bunch of stuff going on here with him from IMDB. You know, one of the things I love about Frank is he is very... Uh, he celebrates his local area in a way that most people I know don't. Like, he's really... Like, he digs where he lives. And I, I dig where I live. Not everybody digs where they live. A lot of people complain about where they live, especially my friends from Connecticut. I think people from Connecticut complain about where they live more than any other group of people I know. Yeah. I don't hear people from Connecticut say good things about Connecticut. Stacy says, Craig rocks. Yes, he does. And turning to the first cup of Jeremy Facebook page now. Oh, did you all did you all see the new whistle kick mugs? So we put up a couple new whistle kick mugs. I want to do a new mug. Does somebody want to collaborate with me on a mug? If you're willing to do some of the heavy lifting, I'll buy you the mug. I just need help with the idea. I need at least some initial graphic design stuff. I want to do a limited edition first cup mug for the holidays. We'll we'll roll it out soon. We'll bring it to the end of the year, maybe slightly after, and we'll leave it there. So if you enjoy doing graphic design stuff let me know i'll trade you a mug for some graphic work it's not 
an economically advantageous decision. The mug's 20 bucks, not even. Um, so most of you know that Facebook was down, when was that, Monday? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp were down on Monday and everybody lost their minds. And I found it ridiculous how much people lost their minds. But you know what I'm finding even more ridiculous? How many people are making a big deal out of it? Now, I don't think people are making a big deal out of it because they think it's a big deal. I think they're making a big deal out of it because they think other people think it's a big deal. Maybe it is. I didn't see it as a big deal. But the only entertaining comment that I have seen, Jared posted a meme. Um, can I do this? I might. Can I share this? I don't know. Hold on. I think there's a way to do this. Yeah. I can do this. Bring this up. Do this, do this. No, nope. maybe, hold on, we're trying. There. Facebook took down a Chuck Norris post, so Chuck Norris took down Facebook. Boom, was that worth it? Tommy says, I posted a Chuck Norris meme on it. There, there you go. See, you guys get it. You're all on the same page. Um, Stacy, if you want to try with the mug, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, something, and we'll we'll, we'll work through. Uh, Jenny says, Facebook was down? As long as it didn't mess with First Cup, am I right? Well, it, in a sense, it did because I didn't get as much from you guys for yesterday as I would have expected because you couldn't get to the First Cup Facebook page on Monday, right? I posted and then it went down and then didn't come up till later in the day. So I don't know. Uh, Slider says, people thought it was a big deal because I guess there was a whistleblower in 60 minutes the day before. Yes. So conspiracy minded individuals found some correlation between the fact that there was a whistleblower stating the all so obvious claim that Facebook put profit before people. Here's a thing that most people don't realize. If you are in charge of a publicly traded company, there are laws. If you are running a publicly traded company, there are laws or things you have to do that are different than if you are not. Now, obviously, whatever company you run, you can't, I don't know, like murder your employees. But there's a whole other set of rules for publicly traded companies. One of those is you have to act in the shareholder's best interest, meaning you have to increase share value and protect it from going down, aka your company is legally ob legally obligated to make money and to make more money. And if the shareholders are able to point to actions and say, you have done things that intentionally did not make us money and you can't justify that by saying, well, it'll make you more money in the future versus, you know, long-term versus short-term, you can be replaced. Now, how that would work specifically with Zuckerberg, because he still has a controlling interest over the company, I don't know. I, this is not like my forte, but when people say this big company chooses profit over people, yeah, because they have to, because if they don't, the people responsible for those decisions lose their job. Could Facebook do things better? Probably. Will they? Maybe. Honestly, I see a massive correction coming with social media where we are all using social media far less. There was a social media platform that was ahead of its time called Path. If any of you are familiar with Path, Path was big. This would have been 2010, 2012, somewhere in there. And the premise of Path was that you could only have 150 friends. And this was built on some sociological data showing that we can maintain relationships with 150 distinct people and no more. But people jumped in and it actually had some good funding and some good people behind it but it it flopped because at the time Facebook was screaming ahead and had so many more features and there was no limit and 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 right so path fell off I don't know if path still exists but nobody uses it 
I think we're going to see some more focused things in terms of social media because we, we can't keep going where we are. The world is more divided because of social media. We are less happy because of social media. I mean, these are things that are easy to prove. So we'll see what happens. Next. Uh, what else are you give me? John's got a great question here. Uh, what about teaching a class to students that outrank you? Do you ever get comfortable doing this? I don't really mean the whole class outranking you, just one to two students, not every class either, just occasionally. Well, here's the thing that I think is most important. Let's work backwards on this. If you, as a student, attend a class where someone is a lower rank than you, do you automatically dismiss them? No, most people won't. Most people of substance aren't going to step up and say, you know what? This person is a lower rank than me, has been training less time than me, or is not as skilled a fighter than me, as me, etc. I automatically dismiss everything they say and do because there's no way they know more than I do. Very few people are going to do that. I've attended plenty of classes. In fact, I have joined... With the, the, the time and training I have, depending on how you want to look at things, I ugh, outrank most of the people that I'm going to go train with. Not all, certainly not all, but most. Does that mean I can't learn from them, can't enjoy the class, and it's un not worthwhile? Absolutely not. I have no problem training with anybody if they have something to teach me. I don't care if you're six months in on something. Here, here's a good example. If somebody was six months in on, let's say, like Krav Maga, or even Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, they could probably teach me things because those are martial arts I know very little about. I would happily train with them. So if you consider that while you're on the other side, your goal as an instructor isn't to be perfect. It's not to be the best. It's to have something to share. It doesn't even mean that you have to know everything about everything or that you have to know more than the people you're teaching about everything. In most martial arts classes, that is the case because most of the time people are starting with one school, sticking around with that school, and then if they're done, they're done entirely. So their knowledge rarely will surpass their instructors, but here's a case where it doesn't. If you have anything to teach, you deserve to be in the front of that room. You don't even have to be, you don't even have to know stuff different or better than anything that those high ranking students have. What if you can just show them how to do it better? Consider just about any athletic team, any sports team. Does the coach, can the coach get out there and do it better than any of the players? Probably not. When Tom Brady played for Bill Belichick on the Patriots, was he ever telling Tom Brady, hold on, I'll show you? No. But it didn't mean that Belichick didn't get the best out of Brady. Right? So if you're, if you're feeling like maybe you're not good enough, you're nervous, you're uncomfortable, imposter syndrome, whatever it is, Remember that your goal is not to be better or higher rank. Your goal is to help your students learn. And I will guarantee that I could put you in front of a class of literally any combination of martial artists, any time on earth, any time training, and you would have something to teach them. Lots of feedback on this one. All right. Stacy says... I've done bits of teaching where some outrank me, but I possess a skill that I know more about than them, i.e. breaking. Wonderful example. I've got plenty of time in over Stacy. She knows way more about breaking than I do. I would have zero issue learning about breaking from her. And, and anybody who's seen her break would probably say the same. Uh, Jenny says that her husband, Matt, oh, that's a big comment, has taught in that scenario, look, <laughs> peeking over the comment, has taught in that scenario, higher ranking students in his class, there was a mutual respect that allowed for it to happen. Matt offered to hand the class over to the higher rank student, but the higher rank student humbly acknowledged that it was Matt's class and declined the offer. No matter what rank a student is, they always have something to teach, and the folks in Matt's class understand that. And let's keep in mind that the ability to teach and the ability to and the, the knowledge are different things. I've known plenty of wonderful, competent martial artists who are absolutely horrid instructors. 
Dennis says, for what it's worth, I've attended quite a few seminars where I outrank the instructor, but I learned quite a bit. My rank doesn't mean I know it all. Quite the contrary. I hope it means I've been willing to learn. Sometimes a teacher, always a student. And that is probably the best way to sum that up. Thank you, Dennis. And our last one for the day, via Jenny from Matt. Matt, I think you, you hold the, the, you have the best questions. I like this. If you could create a form using two different weapons, same time, dual wielding, there's a nerdy, a nerdy term, which weapons would you choose? Okay. Uh, I think it depends on what I'm doing with this form. So let's say I'm doing it for my own enjoyment. Maybe I could utilize it in competition. Uh, I would, they'd have to be two, you know, single weapons. I'm not going to do something. I'm probably not going to do something like Psi and comma because I don't see, actually, maybe I would. That could be interesting. Hmm, I'm thinking. So I... The hardest part for that would be getting my brain to work in the right way and remember that I have a, one set of options on this hand and another set of options on this hand. I think that's why when you, when you see people using two weapons, they are, if not the same, you know, two comma, two psi, two nunchaku, they're similar. Longer sword, shorter sword. Or you've got something like a sword and a shield where, you know, there's not a lot you're doing with this. You're not flipping a shield around. Right? But one of the things I've been working on lately, so here, here's something nerdy about me. I have been working on lately, how can I perform two separate tasks simultaneously with each hand? When does this usually happen? While I'm brushing my teeth. So I'm brushing my teeth and I'm walking around the house and I'm trying to maintain brushing my teeth while I pick this up and I put this down. And I have found that I've gotten better with this. Now, why am I doing that? Uh, because standing and brushing my teeth and not doing anything is kind of boring. But also because I have this theory that because, you know, right hand controlled by left side of the brain, vice versa, that it is strengthening my brain. Is it? I don't know. But I think it is. So the idea of doing that, having two separate weapons that I could do that with, is really interesting to me. Now, how am I going to play that out? I have to get two different training weapons. I don't own comma, and that's really weird to me as I say this, because I like comma. I've spent very little time using them, but they're fun. I should probably grab some rubber training psi and maybe some rubber comma or something, because inevitably I'm going to mess up and drop one of them on my foot and let's not, you know, put holes in my feet. So I think that's kind of neat. What, what would you guys do if you were going to do the same thing? If you were going to have two different weapons and, and learn to work with them together, what would you do? <laughs> Jenny says, yes, he does have great questions. Conversations with him are always interesting. Ah, and I'm not the only one doing different things in different hands. Jenny's doing that too. I did that at work every night when I was working at the lab. It was a production-based job and I had excellent stats because I could multitask that way. Tommy says, fan and knife would be cool, but how about say, Sai, because it's Japanese, and fan, because it's Chinese. You know what's interesting about that is, is I don't know how to use fan, but the, the flip open on a fan is similar to the flip on a Sai. So you could, you could make the argument that those are similar enough that that, that would work pretty well um, mentally. I like that. Says the lab must have loved that. And Jenny says, yeah, they sure did. Well, this was a fun time. We started slow, but you guys started getting into it. Now, uh, because this seems to be working well, I'm going to go drop a post for tomorrow. Leave your questions and comments for Thursday. Right Here. Boom. Done. Oh, 
not that. Copy that. That goes here. Boom. Boom. There you go. Uh, Dennis has another option. Probably not popular, but Tunfa and Nunchaku. I actually, I have the tools. I could do that. I have Tunfa. Where are my Tunfa? I think they're in the closet. I don't think I would start doing that with Nunchaku. <laughs> Only because of all the weapons I've worked with, the one I've hurt myself with the most, and I'm going to guess that most people will say this, is Nunchaku. The number of times I've given myself mild concussions. Boom! You know, take back of the head. Um, actually, if I did it this side, flip, flip, flip. Oh, you know what's interesting about that? That is, I like that. You could consider the Tunfa more of a shield, and the Nunchaku becomes more of a um, rear engaging, uh, like a sword, like a sword and shield. And you can use the, the Tunfa to distract or to brace. Or Yeah, actually, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll play with that. We could do a whole series on this. On combining martial arts weapons. Is anybody else doing this? If nobody else is doing this, maybe I'll I'll, I'll do a series on this. We can do some videos. <laughs> Perfect comment to end on. Thank you, Jenny. The only person who the only person who has ever hit me with a weapon is me. Uh, I can't say that, but yes. Yeah, I've hit myself far more than others have. Tommy agrees. Tunfa is kind of a buckler shield. Yeah, so uh, we'll take a look at that. I'll, I'll I'll play around. I'm going to pull the weapons out because there isn't enough stuff up for me to look at and, and, and attempt to, but I'll work on that. Stacy, drop me a message if you haven't already. We'll, we'll see about doing a, a first cup mug design. And the rest of you, go leave me some questions, some comments, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Have a fantastic Wednesday, everybody. Peace.